I find that they do like shade. You are right, okay, uh, um, and, and they certainly seem to do better um, in that environment than they do in full sun. That's it. That's sort of slightly interesting. Bearing in mind that the basis for them was in Australia, where you think it would be very bright and very warm. Well, originally, and sunny. the articulata, of course, came from South Africa. Yeah, which is right. The same okay. thing. Yeah, but I don't sure. know which part of South Africa. Right. Yeah. But right. Um, but certainly, uh, as I said earlier, they do grow underground. So it's a totally different type of yeah, plant. Right, we're, right, we're trying right. to. We're, we're still learning with it. Um, but uh, you know. That there, there are. I think I've passed on my, about forty odd uh, new plants to Fibrex, and those those will be coming out. And there, there are some very interesting colours. Cliff was very successful. He had ones that looked like sunsets and things like that. Um, and they are going to be. Uh, we're going to be seeing more and more of those. Whether we'll actually get some of those in Europe, I've seen some in Europe already. So we can actually bring plants this way. We can't take our plants into their country. Um, and they don't tend to have the number of um, pelagoniums that we have in Europe. Oh, so their right. breeding material origi originally, I, I, I would say, was reduced. The fact that he went to Millfield Gem and some of that he'd done. Um, when I visited, I was surprised to see that some of the plants that they, were, they had were ones which we were talking about in the 70s and 60s right, and 70s. Right, yeah, I see, yeah, Millville Gem is a very well, it goes old back variety. to the 1800s, yeah, I believe. Yeah, 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 it's a very old yeah. variety, one of the early um, sort of crosses. Um, so, yeah, okay. Um, in terms of compost used, I mean, it seems to be Fibrex, who are the sort of main um, commercial outlet for them in this country, I think they tend to use a, a sort of Levington's... M3. M3, uh, which a, realistically is only available um, in wholesalers in this country. Available, you can go to a wholesale, a horticultural wholesaler and, and purchase it, but um, yeah, I think it's they use M3 with a bit of perlite, I think, don't they? They do, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, so, uh, yeah. No, I'm just not sure. I mean, I, I haven't used that myself, but uh, this, is a, this is a typical cutting, which I would have taken uh, last year. Um, you can see it hasn't grown on really fast, but I've used that in my normal compost, which is um, a mixture of Jack's Magic, uh, Perlite, and a little John in his number two. Yeah, so, I mean, we, we generally say that is our, you know, most pelagonium growers' general sort of open compost that we generally yes. use. I know that you probably need to deviate too much from it. But we do know that Fibrex generally uses a, a Levington, this Levington's M3, with a bit of perlite. Um, I'm doing a bit of a test at home actually, just trying to use different sort of formulations to see if there's any basis that may change the growing of them. But um, as yet, I've got nothing to report back on yet because I'm in the early stages of doing that test. But I think to a certain extent, I'm always doing that anyway, always trying to get that little edge uh, to try and grow better plants, which I think we all do now and again. Right, and just as a, a slight note, I mean, there is a, a really increasing range of colours um, being uh, given to them. We've got a nice pink one here. Uh, again, well, certainly semi-double, if not fully double. But again, very open. Makes a fantastic cut flower. I uh, don't know what variety that is. It's uh, Rushmore Mosman. Mosman. Is that a river? That, they're all rivers. They're all rivers. That's a river somewhere. That's a river that I've never heard of. But... Um, uh, it's, uh, that's a really nice shades of pink uh, and peach, just slightly deeper peach on the upper petal. Uh, but again, very attractive. That one's got a lovely good leaf, and, but you can begin to see here the zonal influence. If we just um, sort of pull through to the, uh, so that you can have a look there. That's got the, a good bit of zoning on the leaf in that one. You probably see the darker zone. So that's showing a bit more of a zonal influence. But it's got this cut shape of the leaf, which is vital, as we've already said, uh, for it to be a zonartic pelagonium, as, as has been classified. So in terms of cuttings then, Steve, if you want to take a cutting from them, um, similar sort of thing with terms of sort of compost, very open compost. Uh, but is there a particular time or a particular way of doing them? Bearing in mind we've got these relatively chunky stems that you get on the zonartics. I, I find that I can treat them 
pretty much as that I would a zonal cutting okay. or a step, you know, and uh, they seem to grow quite well. I know in Sweden they do take they they they've been trialing different ways, and they because you get a harder stem with some of these, you get a brown stem. That brown stem will also root, so. They, they, right, so quite a lot easy. harder woods. So yeah. you, can, you, you can risk using you a bit can, of harder woods than perhaps you would. Uh, it, it, not uh, just uh, the yeah. growing tips like you would. As opposed to soft with woods the, cutting. Yeah. yeah, right, okay. So they, they respond quite well to that. They grow quite well. Um, they grow quickly. Right. Um, as I say, the, the root. The ones the I've same got similar here. type of time. And yeah, all I mean, here's a, here's a classic that was taken about six months ago. Um, you know, it's growing on quite nicely. Don't be frightened to take the top out because at each leaf intersection it will actually it'll throw a shoot. So right, it yeah, will break. Great. So you because they you'll notice that the leaves are so close together, you'll get yeah, more yeah. breaks than you would on a zonal. A zonal yeah. Because so a, to yeah. me it would seem almost like when you take a cutting of a miniature, they're often very close together, the leaf joint. So that often I find aids rooting. So it's yeah. probably a similar situation here. But cut is it there, hard, cut yeah, it hard cut back, it hard. and what you'll get is a lot of growth coming from, they'll throw up shoots from underneath, Right. Yeah. in many cases, and also it will give you a good structure right. to actually build on right. to get flowers. So you can actually get a plant into, as I say, cliff used eight inch pots. So you can get a big plant, but you, you can support that with lots of branches. And because it's got lots of branches, right. what you'll get is that it will actually support itself as opposed to the using all these canes. Right, okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it just needs, you know, a good showman now because showing isn't what I do. I, mm. I'm just a hybridizer. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it should be said, I mean, this year at the Pelagonium Geranium Society show, which I've obviously been talking about, um, it's the first year that we've had a zonartic class. So we're, we're, I'm yet to see as National Show Secretary whether we're going to get any entries, drop to know, because they've only certainly only been widely available for a year or two in this country. But um, yeah, so it, it's going to be a job to know whether that will probably develop over the years. But um, yeah, I mean, they were only released um, in the UK, UK last year at Chelsea, two thousand seventeen. Okay, right, right, right. From Firebrex, yeah. From Firebrex, and one of those plants was called Rushmore Amazon, which was a yellow, which was the first yellow to be released in this country right and it got to the final of the chelsea plant of the year all oh, right <coughs> it was unfortunately yeah, beaten that. by a mulberry bush but, um, <laughs> yes <laughs> okay so uh but uh, yeah th these are really taking off now yeah yeah and, yeah so um, it'll be, be interesting to see next week whether we do get any entries may do may not but i'm sure it's uh, it's a class that will grow um was the the pot the pot size was it a six or was it an eight? I well, can't, I can't remember. These are in smaller the pots here, um, simply because of the size of the greenhouse. Uh, they will let's say Cliff did it in an eight. In show terms, though, I can't. Did we I say it was an eight? eight? I think we, we said eight. I think we may have said an eight. Yeah, yeah so, up to eight. Yeah, so that you'll get a, you could get a pretty substantial plant in. Um, yeah, and, and uh, also plants that have been right. growing more than a year. Right. Yeah. So yeah, you know yeah, you can okay. build up that structure, but yeah. cut them back hard after the shows. Right. Yeah. Take your cuttings yeah. for the future. Right. And. Right. Um, Next time, this time next year, you should have a plant full of flower. Overwintering is a similar sort of scenario. Keep frost free. Um, keep frost free. Keep them down to about five degrees centigrade. Um, don't overwater. You'll find that they start putting on growth quite quickly. They, uh, I found that they were quicker coming into into bud than the normal zonals. Right. Okay. So I, I think they're about right, a month right. ahead. Okay. Uh, right. What I haven't tried because I haven't been showing, growing them for showing is to f see how many weeks there are between right, taking yeah, the so final tip. A stopping time is yeah. probably something that still needs to be measured because although I've got some plants that are in six inch pots at home, most of mine, well, I've got probably two that I would, could argue that I could enter in the show, but there's absolutely no bloom on them at all. Uh, I've got buds coming on one, but certainly nothing. Um, uh, that's going to be anything, anywhere near ready for show and actually we've still got to discuss um, as potential uh, judges and I know that I'm fully involved yes. in the judges panel uh, how well, we're actually going to um, formulate you, judging. You're, you're yes, the yeah, of the judges panel yeah, we, we, we do need to discuss that <laughs> so um, 
again, it's in the very early days though for Zone Arctic, so it's a, a developing scenario with those. Yes, but, we don't um, know how we're going to point it. But yeah, we don't, we don't know because to, clearly the structure is different to anything that's known or anything that's currently in the uh, Pelagonium judging rules. So um, we're, we're going to have to have a think about that. Uh, and go on and formulate uh, maybe a paragraph or two in the judges' rules about how we mark them. But um, that's for another time. Whether that's uh, for this year or not, we probably may have to give a bit of advice to the judges that are actually doing the show this year. But um, well, let, let's see perhaps how many entries we get. If we don't get any, then we may be able to sort of uh, I forget that. For I should this definitely year, bring one along. Oh, there, right. Just so, make, yeah, just to make Steve, sure you yeah, have to yeah, do yeah, something. Yeah. 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 One of the things that you know we also need to decide is is how we categorise the flowers because with a zonal five five petals would be a single, right? Nine, yeah, I see. you know, up to nine would be yeah, in between a semi double, is, yeah, and then up, uh, over you know, ten is I'm, a double. Is right? a double, but I've got one which is particularly huge, as a flower on it, um, which had uh, when I counted it seventy two petals. It looked more like right. a rose. That's Rushmore. Yeah, I see. Rushmore uh, Avon. Right. Okay. Um, which is an absolute stunning plant, and that's yeah, being released. Yeah, because these this doubles, year. for instance, on this one, are very open. Uh, yes. I think they're different, aren't they? And yeah, some are tight. The, the they, tight they look the ones just that you've like got. Rose. Like, yeah, 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 almost like carnations, aren't they? Double carnation. It's yeah. just full of layers. Some of them. Yeah, I've seen some of those. We haven't got any in flower today, so no. we can't show you, but. Um, Right, okay, well, thanks for, let me first of all thank Steve for uh, giving up an hour or so of um, his time this morning, just uh, having a look at the Zone Arctic plants and talking about Zone Arctics in quite a bit of depth, I think. I think we've covered uh, just about everything I think you may need to know. Um, so I'm going to put this video out. Next week, I will have to say that it is the lead up to uh, the big show. I might do a couple of quick videos. Um, I'm going over to be going over to Fibrex Nursery where the national show is being held at the end of, um, well, the weekend after next. Uh, and so I may do a quick, couple of quick videos from there, uh, but th they will be quick ones. I'm not going to have a great deal of time, but um, so I look forward to seeing you again. And uh, again, thanks for Steve for showing us around uh, the Zone Art. It's given us a good bit of background uh, information about them. And um, we'll go on from there, so it's good to see you, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now. Bye.